You saw in previous sections that classes are a good way to organize your code. We saw a customer class that's used to represent a generic type of customer. And then we created a corporate customer class, which inherits from customer, and an individual customer class, which also inherits from customer. So in the base class, customer, we're able to put common functionality. And then in the derived classes, corporate customer and individual customer, we put more specific functionality. So you can organize your code with classes. You can also organize your classes. One thing you can do is use partial classes. Partial classes give you the ability to split the class definition across multiple files. So for example, instead of having one file, customer, that contains the customer class, you could break that up into multiple files. This would be really helpful if you're working on a team where you're writing some of the methods or properties in a class, and one or more developers are writing the rest. So you could have three developers building the customer class. They'd each be responsible for their own file. And when the project is built, the compiler will combine the partial classes into one class. So calling code uses the class the same way whether it's made up of partial classes or not, because partial classes is just a design time thing. You've taken a class definition and split it into multiple physical files. But when the project is built, there is a customer class, and it has all the properties and methods that have been defined across the partial classes. Another thing you can do to organize classes is nest them. A nested class is a class that's defined within another class. And you would do this to organize your class members so they're easier to use at runtime. So let's take the example of a customer class. The customer class has a number of properties and methods that relate to various aspects of customers. Some of the properties and methods relate to information about the customer, the name, the location, etc. Some of the members in the customer class relate to financial information, such as credit limit. There's also a method to change the credit limit. Then finally, you might have members that relate to sales. So rather than present to users of the class a long list of all the members, you can nest the classes and group them. So for example, you could create an information class nested inside the customer class, and in there have properties such as customer name, city, region, etc. You might create a financial class nested inside customer, and that class would contain the credit limit property and the change credit limit method. And then finally, you might have a sales class nested inside the customer class, and that contains the record sales method. So then users of the class would create an instance of the customer.information class to access the informational members of the customer class. Your calling code would then create an instance of customer.sales to access the record sales method. Yes, this is a little more typing, but it's also a great way to group members of the class and make a class with a large number of members easier to use. Another way to organize classes is into namespaces. A namespace is a way to organize related classes into groups. The .NET framework organizes all of its classes into namespaces. For example, system.data contains classes you use to work with data after you've retrieved it from a data source. The classes to do the actual retrieving are specific to the type of data you're working with. For example, SQL Server or Oracle. Because of that, those classes are nested inside the system.data namespace. So for example, system.data.sql client contains classes to retrieve data from SQL Server. System.data.oracle client contains similar classes to retrieve data from Oracle databases. So system.data contains all of these classes, but the classes that are specific to the database you're working with are contained inside nested namespaces. When you create a project, the application that's the result of that has a namespace. And by default, the namespace of the application is the same as the name of the project. You can change this in the project designer, or you can leave the default the way it is. If you're building a single application that you're just going to run, 
You may or may not change the namespace, but if you're going to organize your classes into class libraries and have them in separate assemblies, then you'll certainly want to give some thought as to what you use for the namespace. You'll want to use a descriptive name that not only identifies where these libraries are coming from, but quite possibly also what they do. Let's go see a demo and see how we can split classes into partial classes, how we can nest them, and how we can use namespaces. I'm in the sample application. Let's take a look at this file, customer5.vb. That defines the customer5 class, which is our version 5 of the customer class we've been using in the previous sections. If we go into the drop down list of members of this class, we see classes like city, country, region, methods like get location, record sales, etc. We've used all of those before. This customer5 class doesn't define any new members, but notice that some of the members appear in a lighter gray, such as total sales or record sales. And if we highlight those, they're contained in an entirely different file, partialCustomer5.vb. So this Customer5 class is split up into the Customer5 file, which defines public class Customer5, and the partialCustomer5.vb file, which defines a partial public class Customer5. So we're using partial classes here to split up the definition of this class into multiple files. When the application gets built, the compiler will create a Customer5 class that can be used. And it doesn't matter at runtime that that file was split up into multiple classes at design time, because to call in code, there's just a Customer5 class with the various members. So if we open the main module class and just find a place to write some code, let's dim cust as new Customer5. And when we say cust dot, all of the properties and methods are in here, and there's no distinguishing that record sales is literally defined in one class file, and region is literally declared in another. At runtime, it just flat out doesn't matter. But at design time, it's nice to be able to split the classes into multiple files, particularly if there are are different developers working on them. So you could be working with the members in the customer5.vb file, and another developer could be working with the members in the partial customer5.vb file. And this gets around potential issues that you might have with source control. If there was one customer5.vb file, you couldn't both have it checked out at the same time. But by splitting the class into partial classes, you can check out customer5, make the changes you need to. The other developer could check out partial customer 5, make the changes he or she needs to, and after you've both checked in your changes, then the project is built and the compiler creates customer 5, including both of your work. Let's take a look at nested classes. We'll open customer6.vb, and this also defines a customer, here called customer6, but we're also going to split the members of this customer class into nested classes. So right under the declaration for customer 6 is a declaration of a public class called information. And the information class contains properties and methods that are used to describe the customer. So if we open up information, we can see that that contains customer name, postal code, region, etc. Informational properties about the customer and then methods that work with that information. There's another nested class in here called financial. And the financial class contains properties for annual sales and total sales and a method to record sales. So again, that class, financial, includes financial information. And we do that as a way of organizing the members of this customer class. When we want to use this class, let's go into the method nested class and see how we use 
the customer six class. So for example, if I dim cust as new customer six, I can do that, but now if I say cust dot, I don't see any of the methods in there. What I see are the nested classes, financial and information. If I want to use any of the members in the customer six class, what I really need to do is create a class, for instance, cust info as new customer six dot information. And then in cust info, I have access to the properties and methods that are in that nested class. If I dim cust fin as new customer six dot financial, then when I say cust fin dot, I have access to the properties and methods that are in the financial nested class. Let's run this example and take a look at this in a little more detail. I'll run the nested classes example. And customer info is an instance of the information nested class. And that gives us access to the customer name property, which we'll set equal to big industries. Customer financial is an instance of the customer six dot financial class. And that gives us access to the record sales method. Record sales takes as parameters the customer ID, the dollar amount of the sale, and the units. Well, let's step into this. And again, record sales is defined inside the financial nested class inside customer six. And in order to record a sale, we need to know the total amount, which means we need to know the tax. The tax calculator class is also a nested class, and that's nested inside financial down here. So the full name of the tax calculator class is customer six dot financial dot tax calculator. If we were calling this class from outside this code, we'd have to fully qualify it. We dim tax calc as new customer six dot financial dot tax calculator. But because right now we're in the financial class, and we're calling a class that's nested inside financial, we don't have to qualify it. So here we can just dim as new tax calculator. Well, to calculate the taxes, you need to know where the customer is. And so we want to know the region of the customer, but that's contained in the information subclass. So let's dim customer info as a new instance of customer six dot information. And that gives us access to the get customer info method. That takes as a parameter the customer ID and then populates this instance of the customer class with the relevant information. Let's step into this. This takes as a parameter the customer ID and then retrieves an XML file on the hard drive, c colon backslash big.xml, which is this file here. And that contains the customer name and the location. So the get customer info class will use an instance of the XML reader class to read that XML file. And it stores the customer ID from that XML file to the customer ID property. Same thing with customer name, city, and the one we're looking for, region, as well as country. So after this method runs, the customer info class now contains information on this customer, including the region. And we can now pass that to the find tax method of the tax calculator to get the tax rate for that region. Let's step into that. This code queries the region, to find that it's Washington, and then passes that to the find tax method of the tax calculator, which again is in a nested class tax calculator.
This method will then return the tax rate for the state of Washington, which is 6.5%. We then take that 6.5%, add a 1 to it, multiply it by the current sales of 100,000, and determine that the sales are 106,500. The rest of this method writes the sales information to an XML file, and that's big underscore sales. And let's take a look at that. We record that customer big placed an order, total order of 106,500 based on 500 units. So what we've seen here using nested classes is a way of organizing classes. We could have taken the informational methods and properties and created a separate class, customer information. We also could have taken the financial members and created a class named Customer Financial. So that's one way to split up these members by class. Another way to do it, and the way we've chosen here, is to nest them. Information and Financial belong to Customer, so they become nested classes inside the Customer class. Well, so far in this section and the previous ones, we've created an application that uses customer classes. We have customer as a base class. We've also inherited from it to create corporate customer class and individual customer class. And we've used those classes inside this application. Well, there's no reason to think that this is the only application we'll ever build that uses the customer class. So what we really want to do is make the customer class reusable across applications. And to do that, we can create a class library. I'm going to stop execution of this, and let's go look at this class library. To create this, I added a new project to the solution. And I declared that it would be a class library. And I called it customer library. Then I changed the default namespace. Let me show you how and why I did that. I'll right click on this project and choose properties. That brings up the project designer. And in the application tab, I can see and if necessary change the assembly name and the root namespace. By default, the assembly and the root namespace name are the same as the project. So when I created this class library, the assembly name is called customer library, and the root namespace is called customer library. Well, customer library is a fine name for the assembly. It describes what this is. The assembly will be a DLL that I can use in additional projects. So customer library is a good name for a library of classes related to customers. The customer library is not a good name for the root namespace. A better use of the namespace would be to identify who wrote this. So I changed the namespace to AppDev Code Library. And now, when we use this library in code, that's how we'll refer to it. This method external assembly uses the customer class in this external library. To do that, I added a reference to the assembly inside the project. So I right click on object oriented techniques and I added a reference to the assembly which lives in the customer library folder inside in the output directory which in this example is bin backslash debug. So this customer library DLL is the assembly that contains the code in the customer library. I add a reference to that, and now I can do something like this. dim cust info as new active code library dot customer. That is now the customer class sitting in the assembly identified by this namespace. Okay, let's run this. Let's delete this line and run the application. 
I'm going to run the classes in external assemblies sample. That's letter J. And now we're going to create an instance of the customer.information class. And notice that we're running code that's very similar to the code we ran in the nested classes example. The customer class in this class library still uses information and financial nested classes. But I'm identifying that we're using the customer class in the external library rather than the customer 6 class that's inside this project and I'm prefacing customer with AppDev code library. So customer info references customer.information that gives us access to the customer name and then customer financial is an instance of customer.financial which gives us access to the record sales method which once again writes this big underscore sales file which records the fact that customer big placed an order for $100,000 with tax of 6.5%. What I also did was I decided that the tax calculator should be able to be used on its own. In the previous example, tax calculator is a nested class in financial. So to use it, we had to go through financial. I decided to separate it out. So in this file taxcalculator.vb, I created a definition for the tax calculator and I put it in a namespace, taxes. This now is a nested namespace and it's nested inside AppDev code library. So to use it, I create an instance of the tax calculator class and identify that it's in the following namespace. So the sales variable is a double. It's the amount of the sale, $100,000. Tax calc is a reference to the tax calculator. And now I can pass to the find tax method, the region of Washington, and this will return the 6.5% sales tax in Washington. I multiply that by the amount of the sale, and I get the amount of the tax. And I then display the sale, the tax, add the two of them together, and you get the total. So on a sale of $100,000, tax of 6.5% gives us 6,500. The total is 106,500. So what you've seen in this demo is ways that you can organize your classes. First we saw using partial classes to split the definition of a class into more than one physical file. That gives you the ability to have more than one developer working on a class at the same time. We also saw nesting classes as a way of organizing classes. We nested the information and the financial classes inside the customer class. And finally, we saw creating a class library project as a way of building an external assembly containing classes you can use in more than one project. And we use the namespace as a way of identifying who wrote the class library. And then we saw that you can use nested namespaces to further organize the classes inside namespaces.